Good morning, everyone, and happy Father's Day to everyone that is present in church thus far. And to those that are watching us on Facebook Live and YouTube Live, we welcome you. Whether you're here in person or you're watching, we're all one big family together. And I'm speaking of family, I want to thank God that the family is growing. I know right now there's still a number of you really unable to come out to church, but uh, Brother Al, the dear brother who's in charge of helping us stream and keep the numbers of views, last week in seven days, the Lord blessed us to get over 14,000 views in a seven-day period. So I better say welcome to all of our new friends that have been joining us as well. We're all big, one big family together. Now, before we get the service started with our praise and worship, I want to remind you that because it's Father's Day, we do want to get the name of your dad on our special Father's Day cross. Our last service we had, it took me I'm just to, to say the name. I'm going to read the names uh, a little bit later as you get them in. But we had a huge response at the last service because you know what? I think that people want to honor their fathers. And listen, it doesn't matter if, you know, your dad's in heaven. He's still alive right now. He's worthy to be honored. You might say, well, I'd like to get his name on the cross. Let me walk over to the cross here and talk to you. Sister Joanna did a tremendous job of making a beautiful, let's give her a hand, a Father's Day cross for like we did for the moms. And all you have to do, because we're going to put every name of your dad or somebody that was like a dad to you, on this cross. Now, all you have to do is go to Faith City Family Church Facebook to the send message section, or if you're watching on YouTube, the chat section. And our prayer ministry team is right over here to my right, watching the screens, ready to get that name of your dad or your granddad or somebody that was like a dad to you. And one other thing, there's power in prayer. I want to take a quick little poll in here to the folks that came out to this service thus far. How many in the last year could say that God is a miracle God? Can you raise your hand? He, he's a God who can do miracles. He can answer prayer. He can turn things around. So we love to get your prayer requests. I like to get them right in my hand because we believe that when two or more agree together in prayer, that miracles can happen. You might say, sounds great to me. How do I get you my prayer request? Go to Faith City Family Church Facebook to the send message section or to the YouTube chat section. And we'll be looking for those requests and we'll be praying in a few minutes after praise and worship. Those that are present, would you stand with us right now? We'd be so thankful if you would, those in the sanctuary, if you would stand at this time. Thank you and God bless you. Would you stretch your hands out towards me? And we're going to pray for one another, those that are here and those that are watching. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that the Bible says where two or three are gathered together in your name, that you are there in our midst. And where Jesus dwells, healing dwells, peace dwells, provision dwells, wisdom dwells direction dwells and father right now we pray that everyone in the church building will receive the miracle that they need in the name of jesus i feel that power somebody raise your hand and praise god right now lord i thank you there's not a sickness you cannot heal there's not a problem you cannot address god we thank you for your miracle power those of you that are watching i feel jesus coming into that space right now he is touching you he is beginning to touch you right now and I pray that you'll get that prayer request in. Pastor, it seems like you're pushing me to do it. Let me tell you why. Because faith and action causes a reaction from God. Put action on your faith. Even those of you in the church, you can pick up your iPhone and you can text. I mean, you, you can get that on Facebook and YouTube, and our team will get it in my hands in a few moments. How many are ready to have a good time in the Lord? Would you shout a loud amen right now? Oh, thank you, Jesus. We're so happy to have with us today Sister Crystal, who will be leading us in praise and worship. Let's give the Lord one more loud praise. Amen. Let's have a great time. Happy Father's Day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's continue to give God the praise that he deserves. He is so worthy to us. And Lord, we give you the glory this morning. 
a provider say and I believe he's a Protect those who say he promised me he's a He promised me he's a Oh, and I believe he's a Tell you, I feel faith in this house, and I feel faith on the other side of these cameras right now. Wherever you are, somebody laying on your couch, you haven't been feeling well, you're feeling isolated, you're feeling depressed, but I got some good news. God has promised to get you out of that. God has promised to meet all your needs. Uh, everybody in church, God has promised to heal the sick body. God has promised to open up a door that no man can shut. You know, at the last service, a man came up to me 
and he said these exact words. He said, you know, we've been praying about my cancer situation, and I believe his brother is in this service right now. I'm not going to mention any names, but your brother came up to me after the last service, and he said, well, our prayers have been answered. I am cancer-free. The doctor said, you're good, man. You are good. Hallelujah. How many know that God is a God of miracles? I need a loud amen. That, that's your brother told me that. Thank God Almighty. So if God could do it for him, why can't he do it for you? Oh, yes, he can. Now, we're getting ready to pray for all the prayer needs uh, that have come in. Brother Harmon, our outreach director, is going to get those ready with our prayer request box. And also our prayer ministry team can still take your prayer request. If for some reason we don't get to pray now over them, we will pray at the end of the service over your prayer request. Just go to Faith City Family Church Facebook, send message, YouTube, the chat section. And also, we want to honor dads. We want to get your dad's name on the Father's Day cross. Just go to Faith City Family Church Facebook and the send message or the YouTube chat. Give us dad or granddaddy's name. Brother Harmon, do you have some requests? My goodness, you definitely have some requests. Thank you so much. Let's give our outreach director a big hand today. A faithful brother, faithful man. We appreciate him so very, very much. Lisa says, please pray for my niece, Anelis. She will be having surgery on Tuesday. Yes, we will. This comes from Kathy. Happy Father's Day to you, Pastor Hare, and all the fathers at Faith City Family Church. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Uh, from Serenity, Zer Serenity, pray for my dad, Sorrento, Sorrento Martin and my family. Yes, we will. Annette, pray for employment, health, insurance, housing, and food, security, hope, love, and faith. Yes, we will. Thanks, Brother Harmon. And then Lisa. Please pray, pray for my six-year-old granddaughter, Audrey. She lost her father last year, so holidays like this are tough. Oh, my goodness. We're going to do that for this six-year-old granddaughter, Audrey. Bless her, Jesus. Please pray for my sister with uh, an immuno, immunocompromised illness and husband to walk in God's plan and have divine wisdom to stay uh, uh, stay and take precautions and protect us from this virus uh, and, and to be aware when we go into public places. Amen. Listen, we believe that God is a healer, but you need to wear your mask, put on some gloves, and use your head. God gave you wisdom. Give me an amen right now. Praise the Lord. Pastor, where's your mask? It's not only but a few feet away. When I'm done, the service is always nearby. It says, Happy Father's Day to Edwin Lester. All right. We love and appreciate him from Tanya Willis. Please pray for my daughter, Robin Hill, who was taken to the hospital with possible coronavirus. Please pray that the tests are negative. Somebody stretch out your hand, Father. We, we pray over that immediately, that the, that the test results be negative in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Please pray for my cousin Gray in Georgia as he goes through a child custody battle. Please pray for my dad, Joe Coleman. This is from John. Faith says, please pray for my daughter, Imani, that she passes in school and doesn't need summer school. Please pray for Elaine. This is her first Father's Day without her dad. He passed away on the Fe February 4th, 2020. I'm so sorry, Elaine. Please pray for Mr. Ronald Martin, who is very sick in his body, that we will. Thank you, Brother Charlie. Pray for Deanna. She will be having surgery on Wednesday. How many thank God for all these requests that are coming in live while we're having these services? Please pray for my niece, Ashley. This is a tough time for her since her mom passed away last August. Think, listen to all the hurt. Please pray for my sister, Sylvia, who is dealing with one health crisis after another. Sandra, we will do that. Please pray for Pastor Hare. Thank you. Uh, to strengthen his faith and to be, uh, to be a warrior in this war with the enemy. John, thank you. I need that. Thank you, sir. 
Please pray for my friend Tina's upcoming surgery. Yes, we will, Denise. Uh, please pray for my sister Denise that she can find a job soon and peace in my life. Yes, we will, Unique. Please pray for Pastor Hare. Man, I appreciate you. I'm getting a few of these. Pastor Hare, that he may continue to bring us the word. Thank you, Jesus. Please pray for the violence to end in the state of Delaware. Say amen, somebody. And I'm going to throw something in. We've been praying for three things. Number one, justice. Number two, peace. Number three, unity. Somebody said, you always say it in that order. How can you have peace when you do not have justice? How can you have, you have unity when justice is not achieved? Justice will lead to peace. Peace will lead to unity. How many believe they're on the way? Can I hear a loud amen in the name of Jesus? Please pray for me and my children. This is our first year. Oh, my goodness. Without my husband and their daddy, Cynthia, my heart goes, our hearts go out. My goodness, please pray for my dad. Uh, and please put my husband's name on the cross, Danny Williams. And uh, should I give this back to you, Brother Charlie? They want their names on the cross. Maybe I should give that back to you. All right. I'm almost done, church. Please pray for my son and daughter-in-law that Jesus would heal their relationship from Francis. Please pray for a 24-hour miracle. Is there anybody in the service today could use a 24-hour miracle? Raise up your hand. You need a 24-hour miracle. All right. She said, I need, listen to this, that my court case be dismissed. She believes, I believe with her. Also, please pray for my marriage. Pastor, I am praying for you. Thank you. Please pray for my boss's mom. She's dying from pancreatic cancer. I would love to help her accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. Pray that God will give their family strength. I pray for you, Pastor, as well. Thank you. Please pray for my dad's brother, Oliver. Happy Father's Day, Pastor Hare from Jewel. Jewel, yes, I miss the whole family. And listen. If we could have everybody standing in the church, if you're physically able, and we're going to stretch our hands out to one another as Brother Harmon comes with the oil, and we're going to anoint. Listen, we keep our word. When we tell you we're going to pray, we're going to pray. We're not going to mess around. When we tell you we're going to anoint with oil, that's what we're going to do in the name of Jesus. So I want everybody to stretch your hands out to the needs right now. Father, in Jesus' name, Brother Harmon and I anoint in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son and the Comforter who is the Holy Ghost. Every request that has come in, God, you see those even right now, tears coming down their face. They just lost dad, lost a husband, lost a father. Oh, God, that's why a church ought to exist, to give people hope. And, Lord, heal their heart. Lord, nobody will ever take place of dad. But, God, you can heal their heart one day at a time. God, minister to them. Lord, we pray that you would heal every disease and every sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we pray for jobs. We pray for finances. God, we pray, Lord, that people will find opportunity in Jesus' name. God, as the one request said, violence uh, come to come to a, a stopping, a halting point. But God, we pray even above that that we will see justice in our country, that we will see peace in our country, we will see unity in our nation. Oh God, Father, we pray you will correct what needs to be corrected. Father, make right what's been wrong. Uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, Father, I feel a revival spirit right now. Somebody lift your voice and praise the Lord. I believe God is healing people. I believe God is delivering people. I believe God is comforting people. I believe that justice is coming to our nation, to our streets, to our neighborhoods. In the name of Jesus, God, we give you praise. And Lord, with our hands stretched out, we pray over this a beautiful a box that Usher Phil built with his own hands, the prayer request box. Lord, over 1,000 prayer requests. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my hands on it by faith. God, continue to move every mountain, oh God.
God. Continue to save every lost son and daughter. God, continue to move in situations, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I feel the anointing to pray for those in church. I stretch my hand out to you right now. If you came sick in your body, I command that sickness to leave you. May the Lord heal you now from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. I pray that cancer would be healed. Diabetes would be healed. Somebody's back would loosen up in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for hypertension. I don't know why that came on me, but somebody needs to be delivered from hypertension right now. I believe somebody needs to be healed of panic attacks. I find that in the name of Jesus, and I pray that the peace of God will come down on you and that panic attack will leave. I pray that the stress will be lifted and God will give you peace that passes all. I feel like shouting right now that God will give you peace that passes all understanding. So God, by faith we receive it, and by faith we call it done. Can I get somebody to lift your voice in praise? Can I get somebody to thank God Almighty that everything's going to be all right in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Go on and shout a little bit. That's all right. Glory to God. I've seen a lot of miracles in my day, but the greatest miracle I ever have seen is when somebody goes from being lost to being found. Somebody said, well, I like to be a Christian. I like to be saved, but I don't have time to go to church. I don't have time to join the church. There is nothing in the Bible that says joining a church will save you, that baptism will save you, or even communion will save you. But I got some good news. If you'll call on Jesus, he'll save your soul right now. Somebody watching me, you're literally smoking weed. I know what God is telling me. You're smoking weed, but I'm telling you, Jesus will save you right now. He wants to put a new beginning in your life. Somebody is still drinking, but the Lord will save your soul. Somebody is still hustling drugs and carrying on, but Jesus wants to be your Savior. All you got to do is call on Jesus. I'm looking at this cross right now, and it reminds me that there were three crosses. The Bible said that Jesus, he was in that center cross, and there was a thief on either side. Maybe you never heard a preacher say this, but I'm going to say it. I was one of the thieves. I couldn't save myself. You know, my father is a retired preacher. What's that going to do for me? I love him. He can't save me. My mother is still alive and safe. She can't save me. I had to get on my knees. I had to get with God and say, God, I make up my mind. I'm not going to hell for anybody else. And so like that thief on the cross, I looked over, I looked up, and I said, Jesus, remember me. Look at those three crosses. One man went to hell. Somebody said, why would Jesus send him to hell? You, Jesus didn't send him to hell. He sent himself to hell. He rejected Jesus. Some of you in church, some of you watching, please don't reject him. Don't reject him. The other thief said, remember me. In other words, I need some help, man. Somebody watching right now, you need to say, I need some help, Jesus. I need you to remember me. Somebody in this service, Jesus, I need you to remember me. And I'll tell you, he will do it right now. You don't have to change your clothes. You don't have to join anything. You don't even have to own a Bible. He'll save your soul. Who right now, first in church, is there anybody needs to make peace with God, just raise your hand right now. If there's just one, I want to make sure. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not counting for numbers. I'm, I'm, I want to make sure I got six, seven. Then I'm acknowledging people. Seven, seven. Who are you watching? Raise your hand. Somebody said, I'm out of church. I, gotta, I know you don't, but raise it anyway. Raise it to Jesus. Raise it to him, right? Raise it in your, you're in your bedroom right now. Raise it to him. You're laying in the bed. Raise your hand to him. He'll save you in the bed. Thank you, Jesus. I want everybody, if you would, to repeat this prayer after me. Come on, everybody, stretch your hands out to this cross today, the Father's Day cross. 
Please repeat after me. Say it loudly, everybody. Say, Jesus, right now, I make up my mind. I'm not going to hell. I'm like the thief on that cross who said, remember me, Jesus. Please remember me right now. Save my soul. Put my name in the book of life. On Father's Day, 2020, I confess my sin. I ask you to forgive me and to wash all my sin away. Come into my life, Jesus. Save my soul. Save me now and give me peace. Set me free from the things that I don't need anymore. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. How about a praise God for Jesus? So if you pray that in church, you pray that wherever you're watching, the Lord has saved your soul right now. And let, we would love to do this. If you feel this would be good, we want to send you a cross necklace, whether in church, you'll see it on the screens, or those of you watching, and it's coming up, here it is. Email the church, faithcityoffice at gmail.com. If you want a cross necklace, we just want to give it to you just to remind you that today on Father's Day, you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Well, how much do I have to get? It's nothing. We want to just sow it into your life and bless you today. Are we having a good time today? Is it God good? Let's give the Lord a praise. What a great Father's Day service. Those of you in church, you may be seated, and thank you for coming today. Thank you. And you know, it's good to see a few more that are able to come to church. We are thankful. But we are reminding everyone, don't you feel any pressure to have to attend in the building. If it's still safer for you to watch online, do what is the safest. Because whether you're at present or whether you're on the other side of these cameras, we're fam. Somebody give me a virtual hug. Come on, do your redheaded brother right now. Give me some virtual love right now. Amen. Virtual hug. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. I want to remind everybody it's not too late to go to Faith City Family Church Facebook. Send message section, YouTube chat section. To give us your father's name at the end of the service we're going to read the father's names in honor and respect please do that even now our team is ready i see they're busy over there still getting prayer requests names information but i, I missed the prayer i just tuned in pat no you didn't if you want to get your prayer request in, get it in now because we're going to pray at the end. How many know a miracle can happen at the end just like it can in the beginning? Because God is on time. Faith City Family Church Facebook send message. YouTube chat. The Father's Day gifts, we have them for dads that are at church today right here in the building. But those of you that could not get here, we would be honored to send you your Father's Day gift. We fully understand that many are on un un a table, un unable yet to attend services. We'll send it to you. All you got to do is email the church office, faithcityoffice at gmail.com. But get this, as we leave that up on the screens, maybe your dad is in a nursing home. You can't get to him. Maybe he's, maybe he's on the West Coast. I know God put this on me to do. Wherever your dad is, We'll send him the Father's Day gift. But Pastor, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even go to the church. I'm not even a member. What does that have to do with anything? It's about helping and lifting up people. So if we can be a blessing to you and your family, let us know. We'll send it to wherever you tell us to send this Father's Day gift. It's a different gift this year. It's a scripture card and a tire pressure gauge you might say now what in the world why because for years we've been giving out just the devotional books but it seemed like some around here wanted a little bit of a practical gift so again the scripture card and the tire gauge it's beautiful i really think that you'll like it this blessed me from people watching online 
Shane, part of the online church family. Pastor here, my name is Shane, and I wanted to thank you for doing YouTube and Facebook church services. On Thursday, I was able to note, replay the communion service on YouTube. And my five-year-old son, Riley, and my three-year-old daughter, Emma, had their first communion. My daughter enjoyed it so much, she wanted to do it again. I played the video back with her sippy cup of milk and a piece of rice cake, and we had communion a second time. Shane said, can we all pray that we keep a childlike excitement for God? Matthew 18, 3. Come on, let's give it up for little Emma and her sippy cup and her first communion. God is good. It's all about lifting up people. We come to that point of the service where we get the opportunity to show God our thanks for bringing us this far by faith through these interesting times that we've all been living in and to help share the gospel message, message with the many who need it. Faith City Family Church is an outreach church. Many of you know this already. And we've been out on the streets during the pandemic, during all of the unrest, still out there in creative ways, masks, gloves, distancing the best that we can. Teams out there always in the mix of reaching people, crosses out there. And my phone rang about two weeks ago from a pastor. He called me in Philadelphia, from Philadelphia, and he said, Pastor Hare, I, I need some help. Would you help me? Would you help me conduct? Would you help me put on a prayer march outreach from Broad Street up to City Hall? And I thought there for a moment while he was on the phone with me, and I'm thinking about it because, you know, it was just kind of like fresh, and I'm thinking, God, what would you have? But my heart leaped inside of me, and I thought, you know what? What a great opportunity. Why should we do that? Why am I glad we did it? Because how many believe churches ought to work together, ministries ought to come together? How many believe we're in a time we better come together? We better get on the same page, and we better start praying and getting out there and bringing change that is so needed. So I said, brother, we're going to do it. Tell me what you need. Long story short, from helping them to promote it to sending the team up there to the whole nine, it was a wonderful outreach in the community on Broad Street. I want to take you there, if you don't mind, right now. Go with me on Broad Street in Philadelphia. The significance of this day, it represents the body of Christ rising up and declaring it because we need a voice in the land. There are so many voices that's in the land. Now the sound that the voice of the church, the body of Christ, be heard. What a blessing to be able to take the cross right there in the middle of City Hall. To let everybody know it was a cross, at the cross, where we first saw the light. So we wanted to show and remind them it was a cross that God showed us love. A lot of us are not doing outreach like we used to do. I'm so glad for Faith City, uh, how they are uh, operating in that uh, outreach uh, who stood with us today to side by side and that's what it's all about and that's why we came out went to city hall to let everybody know y'all need the church just like the church need the city and we are on the front line to declare healing in our city i want to take this time to thank Reach Gospel, Pastor Hare, the team for coming. Thank all of you that have prayed with us all weekend long. Thank you for what God has done for us down at City Hall. Know that whatever God has promised, he will make it good. I declare and decree healing is in our cities and your city. Healing is in your state. Healing is in your community. God bless you. We love you. They have a praise God. Can we give God a praise right now? God bless Pastor Hatcher and everybody that was marching for change, marching for justice, for peace, for unity, marching for a spiritual awakening and revival. Because I still believe 
what Andre Crouch wrote a long time ago. He said, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there is no other. Jesus is the way. How many believe that? Would you shout amen? And there's a lot of creative ways that we can take people to Jesus. We appreciate what God did last week. But now, Brother Harmon and I, before this, well, between the last service and this one, we're meeting again after this service, uh, strategically planning other events in strategic spots that really need attention and help in the tri-state area. Also, we're working on partnering with other organizations so when the cross ministry is over, there will be like a mini expo where people can get information on housing, on employment, on health, because after you get saved, you got to learn how to have a life. Give me an amen. You got to learn how to get opportunity. You got to learn how to get employment. So I really believe that the world is positioned right now more than it's ever been for Jesus to save souls. And so I'm going to ask you as after I read the verses on giving, today would you be willing to be faithful in your tithes and in your offerings. Because the gospel's free, but it takes a lot to keep it going to the people. I shared these verses in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 and 11. Many of you know them by heart. We've been doing it faithful for so long here. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. The three blessings, when we give God 10% of the money that he hooks us up to, number one, he said, I'm going to pour out a blessing on you. That means you, your kids, everything connected to you, everything attached to you gets blessed. Secondly, he said there will, there will not be room enough to receive it. That means some increase will be in the mix somewhere along the way. And thirdly, he said, I will rebuke the devourer. That's protection. But in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9, it says that when we give our tithes and offerings, we honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruits of our increase. We honor him. And then finally, in Proverbs 3, 9, not only about honor, but we move over to 1 Corinthians 15. This verse has kept me going when I would wipe the tears from my eyes, maybe fighting discouragement or fighting whatever I was going through, whatever season in my life. How many know the devil wants to put you down and make you give up? But you can never give up. you got to get back up. And i got to share this verse today. It says, therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be steadfast, be unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. How many know you got to keep on keeping on when you got to wipe the tears from your eyes? Lord, I don't think I could take it another day. Get on up and do something for Jesus. And he's going to bless you. And so today, I hope you feel what I said. I hope you see where I'm looking. Between July and August, we want to do some strategic things. And there's a lot of people, even, you know this, Brother Harmon, churches in the tri-state been watching. They're starting to get hungry to do outreach. How many believe, I've, how many believe we need a movement of outreach? Now, they can't, one church can't do it all, saints. We need a movement of outreach. And I believe that is coming. Bottom line, those of you watching, those of you here, would you be faithful in your tithes today? And before I pray, we have a special need. I know you saw the outreach van on the video, whether in church or online. And Brother Harmon told me yesterday that that sound system finally, finally gave up the ghost. It was down from four major speakers to one, to two, now to one, and that's about dead. We have had it for years. And we need to get a brand new sound system on that van. That means no matter where we are, we are own church on wheels. I, we can grab that cordless mic and we can bust the neighborhood seven, eight blocks. We can bust the gospel music out there. Somebody said, "Do you need? we need a new sound system. 
That's about three to four grand. Now, I'm going to ask if anybody feels it in church, anybody feels it on the other side of the camera, if you could be a difference maker, that's a $100 offering. If you could do that, that would help because I'm going to confess Brother Randy by faith. That's coming today, Brother Harmon. You're going to drive that van. There's a real nice place here in Newcastle County that tricks out vans with like mega sound systems. How many believe we don't need something cheap? We need the best. We need to be able to go in the neighborhood and bump the neighborhood. So would you be a difference maker? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. I want to show you the easy ways to give. If you're watching online especially, you can text to give. All these takes, take about less than five minutes. You can call that number, get you to a secure link. You can cash app, the dollar sign, Faith City FC2, lower, uppercase, doesn't matter. Just have that dollar sign on there, faithcitynow.com. All of these are fast ways, secure ways. Another way, you can send it to the church. Some of our members say, you know, I, that's nice you got all that stuff, but I don't do that. Can I send my tithes to the church, my offerings? 179 Stan Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware. That would be fine. We're just grateful for the help. And then to our older members as well, we've been getting more requests. They've been saying, I'm not going to be at church for a while, Pastor. I'm just telling you now. Can you send me my tithes envelope? So we, we will send to anybody. You email the church office or call us. And we will send you a big package of tithe envelope if that would work better for you. Thank you, Jesus. Ushers in the church, I'm going to ask if anybody needs an envelope. If you did not get an envelope, raise your hand, and the usher will bring you one right now. Is there one? Is there a hand? There's a hand up here or right there, Brother Brad. I know that we're getting used to you taking them as you come in. Well, that's how we have to do it right now. So if you forgot one, and there's somebody else, just a couple today. All right. Praise the Lord. And those that just walked in the service, we welcome you. God bless you. Make sure you get an envelope as well. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this powerful service. Thank you, God, for the people that we've been able to pray for thus far. And God, I pray the prayer request as they continue to come in. God, faith with action will get a reaction because faith and action brings miracles. Lord, I pray more dads' names will be coming in to put on that cross. And God, I pray everybody under the sound of my voice will say, you know what? I'm paying my tithes. I, I'm going to give an outreach offering. God, give us difference makers who can do that today. But that $100 outreach offering, we need a new sound system for the vehicle. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. I'll be back in just a moment as Brother Dana provides us with a selection. Thank you, and God bless you.
just before our message today, Brother Dana Saray and our music ministry has a special selection for Father's Day. Can I give a shout out to our music director, Brother Dana Saray, and all the music people hanging in there with us? Man, it's been like a crazy journey, but we all hanging together. God's helping us, and we're reaching people. That's that's what matters. We just appreciate everybody, ushers, church family, members, new friends. We just love each and every one of you. I want to remind those of you that are watching us, the church is open to those who feel that they would like to attend, whether 9, 11 on Sundays or Wednesdays at 7. Next Sunday, we continue to honor graduates. We're going to go into July honoring graduates because many uh, graduations are flowing into the month of July because of, uh, uh, co of COVID. So if you would like to be honored, and we already have new ones that have come in for the next uh, uh, Sunday, uh, email us your picture, your name, and the name of your school. We'd like to get that on YouTube, on Facebook, to the thousands who have been viewing, to God be the glory on our, we've built another wall of honor. There's This one's full. There's another one now being, it's already built. Let's fill up another one. Can I hear an amen? Let's fill up another one and lift up our graduates. Oh, thank, I feel the Lord on that. Thank you, Jesus. Got to encourage people. Amen. So, Brother Dana, hey, thank you, brother, for coming up with a song today to honor dads that are here and that are present. Let's give Brother Dana praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Praise the Lord, everybody. How's everyone doing? Where are all my fathers at in the building? All right, dads. Well, listen, I have a simple song. Um, this song is called Good, Good Father, and the song is basically a conversation from the son to the father. And one thing about being a father is it's a lot of pressure. Dads, there's a lot of pressure. Okay, maybe it's just me then. Uh, well, think, think of what, what, I, what I deem the pressure as we were talking in the back earlier is think about a father, really a good father is you have to be strict, you have to be tough, then you have to be a teddy bear you have to be full of love. And then it's just the pressure to lead by itself. It just seems like a lot. And But we have to be there for the mothers, right, fellas? We have to make sure that the mothers are not doing all the work by themselves. And sometimes it's deeper than us just going to work every day, Dad. Sometimes we have to show our kids that we love them, show our wives that we love them, let them know that we are present and we will protect them. And most importantly, we will love them until the end of time, right? So this song is all about that, just that kind of conversation. So if it connects, God be praised. I want to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Give yourselves a hand. So Josh, how you feel? Oh, I thousand stories of what they think your life and I the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and they tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am.
So fathers, I just want to encourage you. If you try to do everything on your own, at your own strength, you wear yourself out. I encourage you to trust in God and lean on Him only. And He will help you and give you the strength you need to lead your families. Song says, Joshua Lazarus. Oh, love so undeniable I can hardly speak for oh, peace so unexplainable I can hardly speak as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me Fathers, I give you, I give you God's strength. I bid you his blessings, and I wish you God's best in leading your families, leading your, your wife and your children. Give it all to God, and he will take care of you, and I promise he'll meet you on the other side. Happy Father's Day. Praise the Lord. Absolutely beautiful, Brother Dana, music ministry. You blessed us today, and we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Just before we go right into the word of the Lord, I want to remind everyone that we're in the middle of our Father's Day service. If you just joined us, and you can get your name on the beautiful Father's Day cross. It's as easy as going to Faith City Family Church Facebook, send message, or the YouTube chat section. Our ministry team is looking for those names even right now. And if dad's on the other side and he's in glory, he's in heaven, listen, honor him. He's as much alive as we are today. We'd be honored to do just that. Your prayer request, same thing at Faith City Family Church Facebook. Send message, YouTube, the chat section. At the close of the service, we will pray once again. Our message for Father's Day 2020 is entitled, Never Stop Elevating Your Life. Never Stop Elevating Your Life. The devil is a thief, a robber, a liar, and he's trying to put lids on our lives. I am so happy that no matter where we are in life, no matter age, no matter circumstance, no matter our background or our past or drama we've had, God wants to take us higher. Can somebody shout amen? With God, we go higher. The devil wants to bring us down. God wants to take us higher. I saw on a sign today of a local college on my way into church, it said the road to success is always 
under construction. Is there an amen on that? The road to success. Success is really never a destination rather than it's mainly a journey. And let me tell you, you may have reached a certain level in your life. And praise God, we celebrate whatever level that God may have brought you to. But I want today to encourage myself and you to know this, that God has more, God has greater, God wants to do exceeding abundantly above. God in one day can make up for a year of pain. God in a week can make up for five years of drama because he is God. He controls the universe. He has the final say. He is alpha. He is omega. He is beginning. He is end. So as far as I'm concerned with God, all options are on the table. Never stop elevating your life. I want to share five principles out of the scripture today that I pray will empower you and me to continue to ascend, continue to aspire and go higher. Number one, it's important the scripture teaches to elevate your expectations because we serve an unlimited God. When you start your day, what kind of day are you expecting to have? The old saying is, if you're looking for trouble, you probably find it. If you're looking for negativity, it's there. But you can start your day by saying, this is the day the Lord hath made. And I believe that today something good is going to happen to me. I believe that today God has something good. God has something great. I believe that God is a God who can make up the difference. How many believe he can restore back to you the years that the locust ate, that the canker worm and the palmer worm, because God is an able God. Elevate your expectations to an unlimited God because the word says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, but as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into or has it entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them. Some only use this verse to talk about heaven. But I believe that we serve a God who will give you some heaven down here on earth before you get to heaven. So I can't just slice that verse for the here, for the, for the hereafter. I'm believe, listen, some people are only living for the sweet by and by, but I'm going to live for the sweet now and now. I believe that God has some more sweet days for me. I believe God has some increase for me. I believe God has love. I believe God has increase. I believe he has dreams that he wants to bring to pass. Say amen, somebody. And so the only criteria that Paul said to live at this level is which God has prepared for them that what? That love him. If you love the Lord, would you shout a loud amen here at church and those watching? If you love him, give him a big praise right now. Somebody shout, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. And he said, if you love me, I can bless you in ways that you would never have imagined. Jeremiah 29, 11, I always like to throw that in the mix. Because it affirms that even though God sometimes allows us to go through things, and even though God sometimes will have to discipline his children, the Bible said, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth betimes. But he's also a God of blessing. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil to give you an expected end. Yes, God may allow us to go through a valley here and there, but at the end, God has a plan. God has a purpose. And it's always God's desire that once we walk through the valley of the shadow, we don't camp down in the valley. We don't stay in the valley. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And at the end, we can turn around and say, what I went through maybe wasn't pleasant, but now I can see why God let me go through it. Because all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. I give God my praise in eight Romans 8, 37. What I went through may have broke my heart. It may have hurt me. But now I'm a more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Through Christ who got me through it. 
I'm thinking about Ephesians 3.20, about elevating your expectations to an unlimited God. Now, unto him that is able. We serve an able God. We, when I was a little boy in church, they always said, God is able. They said it every five minutes. God, can we shout, God is able? Because he is an able God. Well, when the doctor says no, the great physician can say yes. God is able when the finance man says, sorry, this credit score ain't going to work. You can't get that house. Maybe your credit score may not be right, but if your faith score is right, all things are possible with God. God can hook you up to miracle supply because he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. We're talking about never stop elevating your life, number one. Elevate your expectations to an unlimited God. Number two, you are a creative person, so elevate your gifts and talents. Somebody said, you don't know me. How do you know that I'm a creative person? Because I know the creator who made you. I may not know a whole lot about you, but I know the one who made you. When he made you in the womb of your mother, he did not make junk. He made something beautiful when he made you. Did you hear me, somebody? Well, Pastor, you don't know my, I don't, maybe I don't, I don't, I don't even know my parents or I'm a foster child. I'm a, listen, you, when God made you, he made something special and something beautiful. And so it's time to take those gifts and talents and it's time to, to invest in yourself. It's time to believe that God wants you to do better and to go higher. Now, for somebody with a bad self-esteem here in church or somebody watching right now, I have a verse for bad self-esteem issues. Psalm 139, verse 14. You know, David went through self-esteem issues because he made some big mistakes. Well, hey, anybody belong to the big mistakes club besides me? I made some in my life. The devil will say, look at you now. What do you mean, look at me now? I'm still a child of the Most High God. Just because I'm down today doesn't mean that hope is not on the way. Just because I'm down today doesn't mean I'm not going to bounce back stronger than I did before. If God be for me, who can be against me? But David was saying about himself, I will praise you, O God, and here's why. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well david said god i want to thank you for opening up my eyes even though i'm messed up here and i'm messed up over there and i'm not everything i should be all the time praise god that i'm still somebody special because i was crafted by the hands of an almighty god you think mom and daddy made you know the god who made your mom and daddy made you and made your mom and daddy before them the god who created us made some Something beautiful when he made you. That's why you need to hold your head up high. You're as good as anybody else. No, God does not love this person more than he loves this person over here. God loves us all the same. So you take those gifts and talents and you begin to walk through doors. Quit letting the devil rip you off by saying, well, you're shy or you can't. Listen, with God, you can do all things. Even if your stomach is churning and your leg is shaking, walk through the door by faith that God has opened up with you. Take the meeting, sit down, talk to the person, because wherever you are, you are not alone. God is in the mix with you. I'm talking about never stop elevating your life. Number one, elevate your expectations to an unlimited God. Number two, you are a creative person because of the one who made you. Elevate those gifts and talents. Number three, your community needs you. So elevate your efforts in making other people's lives better. Now, hold on, Pastor, I don't get it. You just, we just went over this way a second ago about I'm creative and about lifting myself up. And yes, there is a time and you need to do that so you can be more effective. But then there comes a time where you get your eye off yourself and you get your eye on somebody else. How many can 
How many have learned with me over the years, when you're at your lowest, that's when you need to get your mind off your pain so you don't go to the crazy house. If you just sit there and think about how bad it is and how sad it is, the devil will come in there and lie to you all day. But if you will say, I've had enough of this. There's somebody worse off than I am. There's somebody, even though that my shoes may have holes in them, there's somebody in a wheelchair that doesn't have any shoes. I'm getting up out of this space, and I'm going to go help somebody. And the moment you get into the movement of helping somebody else, God is going to get into the movement of helping you. Somebody said, is that true? It's in the Bible. God said to Isaiah, I got some advice for you, man. You need to do something, and it's going to help you out. Somebody watching, somebody in church, this is your answer. It says in Isaiah 58, 10, if, conditional, if you're willing to draw out your soul to the hungry person, if you're willing to satisfy the afflicted soul, people with issues, then shall your light rise in obscurity. In other words, God's bringing you out of the darkness, man. And your darkness will be as the noonday. In other words, you're busy reaching down to try to help somebody with issues and to be impatient with them and trying to, you know, help their life get better. And then all of a sudden, you feel a hand on your shoulder and all of a sudden, God's picking you up while you're picking somebody else up. I'm here to tell you what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. You're busy helping somebody over here and God's working on your behalf over here. That's why the devil is afraid of you to get involved in helping somebody because it's going to mess up his whole plan. Because, listen, God set a law in the motion, and how many know when God sets a law, it cannot be reversed? He said, whatsoever a man sows, he shall reap. If he reaps bad, he will get bad. If he reaps love, he will get love. If he reaps good, he will get good. If he gives, he will receive. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Can somebody shout with me? I wish I didn't have all these wires. I jump off the platform. I still keep six feet away. Don't worry about it. Amen. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. Never stop elevating your life. Let's go back to number one. Elevate your expectations to an unlimited God. Number two, you are a creative person. So elevate your gifts and talents. Number three, your community needs you. So elevate your efforts in making other people's lives better. Number four, you have influence, whether good or bad, so elevate the good. Everybody in this room and everybody watching is an influencer to some level, some more than others. What is sad is when we spend our years and waste our years being the wrong kind of influencers. And you know what? That's part of the problem in our country. We have a lot of negative influencers that date way back over 200 years ago. And that's why we have to elevate the good. Come on, give me some amens. We need to get out and influence the neighborhood, influence the community, influence government, influence education influence the faith community. We need to be influencers so that we can get the change that is so desperately needed. Somebody said, well, I guess you'll do that or she'll do that. No, it's you need to do that. Everybody can bring something to the table. What can you do? No matter how small, no matter how big, everybody has a role to play. I need some amens right now. I need somebody to say after me, say, I am an influencer. You are. When you leave this service, those of you, when you turn this off and you stop watching this, you're going to have an impact on somebody else's life. What will your impact be? Will your impact encourage them? Will your impact make them want to achieve, want to aspire, want to soar? Or will your impact discourage them? Will you be an influencer that does not compromise and say, this is what I believe and I'm not moving from what I believe because what is right is right, what is wrong is wrong. I'm standing my ground and I'm going to let my light shine. I'm telling you, the more people that will begin to influence in the right way, we're going to see a change. 
Jesus knew this when he was preaching Matthew chapter 5. And he said these words in 16, verse 16. I bet you know this like the old song you sing in Sunday school. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. That's where the song came from. Let your light so shine. Whose light? What does it say? Whose light? So that means we all have a light. Don't look at somebody else and say, you do the shining for me. No, no. You are the light. Get shining. Stop whining and get shining. Can I hear some amens on that? Because the more you shine, you know what happens? When you shine, it makes somebody else want to shine. How many know when you're negative, it draws other negativity? So begin to do what God has assigned you to do. And somebody said, well, I let my light shine. And some people didn't like how my light was shining. Some people stopped being my friends because I was letting my light shine for Jesus. You know what? If somebody doesn't want to be your friend because Jesus has called you to shine, you don't need them anyway in your life. You need to be the light that God wants you to be. Because when you get to heaven, you're going to stand before God. And he's going to want to know, did you let your light shine? Did you do what you could have done? Everybody's got a role to play. And then finally, number five, as our musicians make their way, elevate your reach. Elevate your reach by connecting yourself to efforts that reach out to others. I love this. We're so blessed because, see, everybody plays a part here at Faith City. Some are able to go out on the street. Some are not. Some are able to do other things behind the scenes. Some say, you know, I just can't do that. My life doesn't work that way right now. But what do you do? You support it. You give. You finance it. You get behind it. Everybody has a role to play. And at the end, we reach our goal. Because it's all about connecting people, not to religion, not to church, but connecting them to Jesus. And how many know if you can change a man's heart, you can change a man's ways. That's why people are getting it backwards. They're they're forgetting the real change begins not on the outside. Real change begins on the inside. We've got to get out there and tell people that you want change, let God change you from the inside. Let God empower were you with his call and assignment and we're going to see change like we have never seen before because it's going to be from the core of a person from the inside of a person how many believe it's coming can I hear an amen right now it's on the way I declare it in the name of Jesus because we are about changing hearts when we change hearts we'll change men and women we change men and women they'll change their ways and the Bible says that A man and woman's ways need to please the Lord. Luke 14 and 23, this has got to be one of my favorite verses about outreach. I remember when I started years ago in outreach in the 90s, I started running buses. The first neighborhood I ever ran a bus in was Brookmont Farms out on Route 40. That's the first place we went. It was so out of control in that neighborhood that they had a police substation in the neighborhood when there was a fire in the neighborhood no fire truck came unless without police escort but let me give you my little story how God changed that area for a season we started working that area door to door house to house we went in there and we had a permit for the park which is in the front of that community. We went in there with our big stage. We went in there with about 300 new basketballs. We had a huge, huge cookout, and we had a service. And God showed up in the park, and a lot of people began to turn their heart to Jesus. We said, we're not showing up one time. We'll be back next week. And that next week, we started our bus ministry in that neighborhood. Fast forward a few years later, we end up Go ahead and read Google this. 
there is a there is a Delaware Today magazine where yours truly is on the cover. I don't know how that was crazy. I remember being in grocery stores and people would look and they look back at me. You know, are you on that cover? And the story wasn't about me. It was about the change of a transformation of that neighborhood. Example, there was one night, Brother Dana, there was 40-some young people on a corner. And what happened? The police, listen, some things don't ever change. The police went over to them starting to hassle them. What are you doing on the corner? Why are you hanging out on the corner? Read it in the magazine. It's a true story. One of the kids said, we're here to catch the bus out Faith City because we're in the big youth choir that we had at that time. One of the officers didn't believe them. But guess what? The cop car stayed there, and what happened about five minutes later, here come the Faith City bus pulling right in there. All the kids get on. Why am I telling you this story? Because you change a neighborhood by changing hearts. How do you change hearts? Not by going in with the Bible thumping people, acting like you know everything. You go in there as a servant. You earn their trust. You show up. You stay in there. And after a while, people know you must be for real whatever you got is what I need uh, to God be the glory and for years we stayed in that neighborhood and I still run into young people today I just thank God they can recognize me pastor Hare, how you doing it's like do you know who I am and I'll say I'm sorry I'm you know I'm always I'm on attack no I don't remember who you are I used to ride the bus and what are they doing they're doing good Telling me all about their future. Why? This story's not about me. It's about the message today. You can elevate your community. You don't think you can do it? Listen, the greatest ability that God ever asked for is availability. If you will make yourself available to God, God will use you to change your world. Never stop elevating your life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. How many believe the best is yet to come? How many believe the best is absolutely yet to come? And so, before I pray, I want to make sure that our prayer ministry team, Brother Harmon, I thank God for them. We're getting ready for our dad's names for the Father's Day cross. I want to remind those that are watching that feel Isolated. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Brother Harmon. Appreciate that. That you, you feel like you have no way to get a gift to your dad. We'll send it to your dad. We may not know you. I don't have to know you to help you. So here's all you need to do. Is just email the church. Faithcityoffice at gmail.com. And we will... We will get that address, and wherever your dad is in the country, wherever he is, we will mail that Father's Day gift. I'm going to tuck a little note in there from myself, from the church, just say, Happy Father's Day, a little Bible verse. Maybe it might just be exactly what he needs. We're going to be praying over prayer requests as well in a moment. Faith City Family Church Facebook, send message, YouTube, the chat section. We have a team of wonderful people who will be placing after the service the names on the cross. Brother BK, I know you can hear me. You're operating all the cameras up on the third floor. BK, we want to make sure that we get B-roll of this cross after all the names are on there. Next Sunday, make sure if you're not here, tune in, and we're going to show you close-up videos of all the names that are placed on the cross. This one's already filling up. If we have to, we'll get another cross as well. But I'm going to begin to read the names of fathers that will be placed on the cross. Peter Slater, Adolph Brew, Cedric Crawford, David Wise Sr., Bobby Slater, Courtney Bennett, Darius Swan, Peter Rossbach Sr., Alexander Bennett, Samuel Bowen Sr., 
Pedro Swan Jr. Sylvester Cruz Jr. Jeffrey Jackson. Charles Purnell. Niall Edward Smith. Angel Santana. Jesus Maynuth. Earl Bradley. Edwin Lester. Kimbridge Grayman Sr. Darwin Swan. George Jones. Devin Jones. Alfred Ojikeri. Daddy John. Darius Swan. This reads, and I'll read it, my son Greg. Fred Smalls. William Mitchell. John Reed Jr. Reggie Gaiman. Kenneth T. Hoyt. Ken Gaiman Jr. Rudolph Sut Sutton. Forgive me. Rudolph Sutton Jr. Wayne Gaiman. John Reed Sr. Reggie Morrow, Gordon Kane, Mark Blessed, Thomas Blessed, John Janowski, Breon Jones, Bryant Harris, Eric Nix Jr., Jerome Anderson. Brandon Jones, Daryl Jones, Juan Miranda, Juan Miranda, forgive me, Juan Miranda, Clayton Claven St. Sheridan Jr., Carl Jones, Jerome Anderson, Renee Gutierrez, Walt Smith, who is deceased, Tony Stewart, Gerard Fisher, Oscar Hart, Tracy Hart, and James Brown. Can we give a big, loud praise to the Lord for all of these dads for this service? Come on, give a loud praise. God bless each one of you. We honor you, and we thank God for you. We praise the Lord today. And now, I want to give the benediction. If it would be okay if we all stood to our feet for the closing prayer, the closing benediction. Brother Harmon, this has been a day of many prayer requests, many. And I want to give God praise nearly 130 fathers in two services. Names go on the cross. Can we give God praise for that? Isn't that a great blessing? That is a blessing. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, would you stretch your hands out, church, as Brother Harmon gets out the oil and myself. Father, we are praying for the outreach ministry. Thank you for that. We are praying for the salvation of Sandra's best friend, Kevin, who she loves dearly. Father, we are praying uh, for Derek as he is still incarcerated and waiting to get home to his two children. We're praying for Debbie Wheeling, that you would heal her body. For Vinod, we're praying for you, my brother. It's unspoken, I understand. Kevin, we pray for Kevin and Monique that God will bless that wonderful married couple. They said, we want to have children. We want to have a family. Father, give them that miracle in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, give them a miracle. I pray I'll dedicate the first baby right here at Faith City. 
God, we pray for our June who hasn't been well. Bless him, heal dad in the name of Jesus. Uh, thank you for that happy Father's Day, Cammie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, Sister Zarena, we pray for your brother Lamar who was in a serious auto accident. And we pray that God will heal him and set him free in the name of Jesus. Give him new cells, nerves, and supernatural healing. We pray for Blanca, who was fighting cancer, who just had uh, uh, two weeks ago, uh, that God will give her the strength to beat the cancer in the name of Jesus. Uh, and we pray for Samuel, that he will come to know Jesus as his Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And, Lord, we pray for Melvin. Melvin Gorham asked for prayer for a new apartment. I believe a Mel, no, praise report. He asked for prayer for a new apartment. He's happy to say he has his new apartment. He is present at the service. Give God a shout. Praise God. He, God answered that prayer. And finally, we thank you, Lord, from Brother Clifton. Thank you, Jesus. To be able to see another Father's Day, he said, thank you for my two sons, my two grandkids, and my family. God, I not only bless all these prayer requests, but now I stretch my hands out. Stretch your hands out to me, church. You're my family. Those of you watching, we're family. We got the same Father. Hallelujah. I pray that the Lord will bless you, that the Lord will keep you, that the Lord will make his face shine upon you, that the Lord will be gracious to you and grant you his peace in the name of of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the comfort of the Holy Ghost, and all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, for all our dads in the church, our Usher Brad, if he'll raise his hand, Usher Brad has your Father's Day gifts. You may receive them from him at the altar. Thank you, those who could come, those who watch. God bless you. Amen. And amen. Let's give the Lord one more praise. God is good.